got our real estate roundup for this week, which is the three eyes dominating today's real estate space being interest rates, inventory, and inflation. Um, so wanted to dig into these because like I said, all of these seem to be a, a revolving door right now with which one's grabbing the headlines. Um, Jay, you're in the lending space. Let's start off with the interest rates because you, you have even better experience than I do pertaining to what that space looks like. Yeah, interest rates are, we're, we're starting to see them kind of flatten out for the time being. Uh, interest rates are always predicting worst case scenarios on the future. So the more turbulent currently we're, we are, the more turbulent our real estate interests our interest rates are going to be, and usually that means they're going to rise, um, because you got to view, you have got to have the same view as the banks that are wanting to essentially make sure they make money for the long term. And so, if they expect there to be some tumultuous uh, activity in the market or world events or whatever it may be, they're going to raise interest rates to kind of hedge um, their bets against a more a more poor uh, economic outlook than uh, would be otherwise. So we already knew there's going to be some Fed hike rates, all the all that boring stuff. But then on top of that, there was a war in Ukraine. Um, so super. Well, so let's let's talk though. How does interest rates affect the average home buyer today? So without yes. like all that jargon, because I I can imagine most people are just like, just tell me something that relates to me. Because yeah, yeah, you can blame one Ukraine on on this and that, and the Fed does this and that, but if I'm looking for a home right now, what do I need to know? Yeah, you gotta know that your options need to be a little bit broader than a 30 year fixed. Now we're going back to those times where an interest rate, uh, you're, you're gonna have better interest rates at say a five one arm or a seven one arm. And uh, a five one arm? Five one arm. One arm. Yes. I'm a first time home buyer. Yes, first time home buyers out there. So five one or seven one arm and haven't been too popular the last few years because interest rates have been so low. But a five one arm, uh, essentially that five part means that you have a fixed interest rate for five years. And then that one part on the end of it uh, means that every year after that, the interest rate will readjust based on an index and the, um, oh gosh, the index and the, I drew a blank. Basically it can, it fluctuates though, based Changes. on what's going on in the market. So yep. good market, good interest rate. For... Yeah. Adjustable rate mortgage. Okay. But with that again, seven, one arm, five, one arm, that five and that seven means you have a fixed interest rate for both the five years and the seven years respectively. The shorter that initial period, the better the interest rate because they're not worried about basically losing money on that. It's a short term, a so, gamble for them. So. so are you saying if I got a loan today for a 5-1 arm, which is, again, a fixed rate for five years, that'll mm -hmm. give me a better rate than the 7-1 arm because, again, it's a shorter term? That's what we're starting right? to see. Yep, that's okay. what we're starting to see. So, And that's that's how it's been historically with the ridiculously low rates that we saw these last few years, Thirty uh, a 30-year 30 fixed and a arm were about the same. Okay. Banks didn't want to offer too much lower in interest rate or usually about the same interest rate okay. um, for an arm because they didn't want to effectively lose money for yeah. the next few years. So, so, so how about, do you have any unfortunate real life examples of individuals that maybe you were working with or you heard someone else was working with in your office where interest rates affected their ability to get into a house recently? Yeah, Definitely becoming a bigger and bigger thing as interest rates. Uh, at one point last month, interest rates rose half a percent in just a week. Okay. Um, and so with that, if your interest rate is higher and you can only borrow up to a certain amount uh, of debt to income, right? Your mortgage right. can only be up to a certain portion of your income. So if you have a higher interest rate, that means that your monthly mortgage payment would be higher for that amount of money, meaning in order to stay below that threshold of what you can be approved for, you have to either lower the loan amount or buy down your interest rate again. So that's right. been the biggest thing is higher interest rates mean less people can borrow as much money as they were able to prior to that interest rate hike. So when you say buy down interest rate, let me get this straight. So interest rate, let's pretend uh, 5%. 
and I say, but Jalen, I heard about these three percents. You're saying I can buy down, and maybe not even to three. Let's just use four, one full sure. percent. You're saying I can pay you, I can pay you money to go mm -hmm. from the current rate of five percent interest rate and get to a four percent for my mortgage to make that payment more affordable. Correct? Yep, we're paying whatever bank we're getting your loan. How through. much? Depends, <laughs> and that usually okay. depends on your credit too. Okay. Your credit is a, is a factor of that, and also. Also the loan amount, there's a there's right. basically a lot of factors that have to be taken into account. And so you want to make sure that you're Can seeing you give those. a ballpark. It's gonna be in and around this, give or take two thousand, or give and take even five thousand. Is it that big of a wiggle room? Yeah, it's it can really be it can be big. It can be give a me big the best case room. scenario. I have the perfect credit score and I wanna die buy down a full percent. Best case scenario is it's gonna cost me how much to buy down a full percent? Probably a couple percentage points, so two to three to four, again, depending on everything, but a couple, at least a couple percent of the loan amount. So say you're 500,000, in order to get that, a couple percent would mean, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 5, maybe 15,000. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We're not That's talking about works. hundreds of dollars. We're talking yeah. about, yeah. And it comes down to, at that point, what's your break-even point? A lot of people go, oh, I have this much lower interest rate. I'm saving this money per month. It's like, no, you spent $10,000 to get that interest rate. So if you saved $100 per month, on, but you spent $10,000 to save $100 per month, there's a break-even point of when you actually are really saving money. So yep. if you're going to, if you're, say, in the military and you're going to leave in a couple of years, right. does it make sense to buy down the rate if you're going to move in two years, but the break-even point's in five? It's like, no. Yeah. So for, for those listeners that are absolutely maybe lost right now, this is why you Over lean on professionals yeah. <laughs> and ask yeah. questions um, oh, because yeah. it's not your job as a prospective buyer to necessarily understand all of it, especially initially, but it is your responsibility to know what you're getting yourself into and to know your options. And yep. so that's why it's important to surround yourself with good people who know their space well, so they can, so they can offer you these options and explain them in an individual one-on-one -on -one meeting to make sense of this um, because i'm sure for for many listeners it, it becomes very complex very quick and they're just like jay you had me lost at buy back <laughs> like yeah. or buy down and it's like what 100%. so yep yeah um, <laughs> what what is simple yeah. for you and i to comprehend is difficult for the average which again is no discredit to anybody that's but that's the complexity of this space um, yep. And yours and my responsibility to understand it so we can look at different options, even when interest rates are going up. Um, yeah. And I, be more I creative with to, it. So, yeah. yeah. Creative, but legal, right? It's, yeah. It's not doing <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah. Saying, gosh, I hope nobody looks at me right now and, and exposes me. It's yep. perfectly legal. It's just under, understanding the rules of the game, right? You can't win yeah. unless you know the rules of the game you're playing with. And, and too often. Yeah, too often people feel like there's only one way to, to tackle something or to address something. It's like, no, yeah, but if you work with someone who's very well-versed in, in what to do and how to go about doing it, they're going to be able to, to go at it a couple different ways. Yep, um, get you to where you want to be. Also, yeah, and, and I also wanted to touch on the black and white of interest rates. I, I've said this a couple times, but wanted to share it here too. A full interest rate change. And let's let's pretend they they uh, increase in this hypothetical situation because they are in reality. They bump from four percent to five percent. For those prospective home buyers, your buying power fluctuates in and around ten percent. So again, what does that mean dollar wise? If you were comfortable with a month uh, monthly payment of a five hundred thousand dollar home, you're just like, yep, that gets me what I want. And in California, uh, let's pretend it's a two bed two bath at five hundred thousand. And the interest rate again was 4% in on January 1. And now we're saying, oh, nope, it's 5% now. That means you need to look at a house that is $450,000, right? To keep that same monthly payment. If, if that maxed you out and you're like, I can't afford anything more than that. You now need to look at a house that's in and around $450,000 to keep that same monthly payment. What does that mean? That means home prices, unfortunately for you, have gone up which means you are probably not looking, if you're looking at a two bed, two bath, it's probably a little bit farther of a drive, right? Um, 
versus where you might have been looking in on January one. It might mean that you're looking at a at a one bed one bath now, or a two bed one bath. Yep. Um, Compromise. So you, the yeah, so your, your ability to a be informed and b you might have to compromise. What are you going to give up to get in? Yep. And and there's always that give and take, um, but that's the black and white portion of how do interest rates affect your life um, as a prospective home buyer? It's a one to ten percent rule. Jalen, anything to add on that? No, I think I think we covered it uh, as superficially and with all the important stuff without getting too bogged down in every little detail. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely do that with interest rates. Talk, talking numbers uh, on a podcast uh, can definitely be hard to follow very quickly. So, <laughs> all right. Again, we, yeah. lean on professionals because that's what we're here for. Um, and, and I think I'm not enough individuals and Jalen, maybe your experience, experiences are different, but I feel like not enough individuals use us as resources. Yeah. Um, ask questions. It's free to pick up the phone or to shoot an email or to text and say, Hey, would you mind answering a couple questions for me on this? Um, yep. Because there's nothing worse than feeling like you're alone. You're the only one that, that is dealing with it. And, and that's that. So, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. 100%. Always just reach out. Email, text, phone. It's a lot easier to get your questions answered now versus being like, oh, shoot. Yeah. I, uh, apparently, I can't own a home now. And that's what I'm hearing on the news. Right. Um, maybe, oh, maybe not. So. Jay, Jay, real, real quick, actually. I um, wanted want to actually hit on interest rates going up and inflation, because we haven't dug into inflation. Um, yep. Thoughts on anything you've come across pertaining to how home prices change pertaining to interest rates and or inflation? Yeah. Well, the less money someone can qualify for, the less um, desirable those more expensive or the houses that were kind of on the edge of being affordable versus not affordable, saying like $300,000 house, but more people could offer a higher um, could, could do a higher offer uh, because they could get qualified for more money. Now that that's slowly going away, it means that home prices are starting to, and I mean, they should be, they, we've all been expecting it, but they're starting to not be jumping leaps and bounds above where they were before, where it was right. like, oh yeah, we're putting in 20,000 over asking price or, yep something like that, it's, it's, everyone has to be smarter, including sellers. They can't over list a price, a house like they could before. Um, people don't want to overpay if they can't finance that overpayment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it, you're definitely seeing that. And even with people that put more money over asking price, that's only about 20% of houses anyway. And that's always, that's kind of how it's been for most of this crazy time. So all the people that have been saying, you know, housing prices are skyrocketing to the roof and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, but generally they're about where they were listed at. They're not going for too far over and by too far, meaning like a full percent over or a couple percents over what the listing price is. So inflation is definitely starting to cool the market and pushing yeah. a lot of the people that have been waiting and now they're not comfortable with their payment anymore. And so those people are pushed out, which is yep. creating a less competitive market as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to jump on, on the back of that one and make mention of a couple graphs I've come across recently. And that is when interest rates have gone up, home values have continued to go up. I think a lot of people assume, oh, economy is bad and, and interest rates going up and inflation up. So that means houses are, house prices are coming down. At least that's not where we're seeing to date. Um, and that's the facts being the facts, not my opinion saying, well, I think that might happen. Um, so again, listeners out there, be mindful of where the facts lie and where opinions um, are just shared with, with nothing behind them. Because it's important to note, home prices do not automatically come down just because we're dealing with this, this inflation uh, within the economy and with interest rates going up. Um, home prices have continued to go up. Why? Because supply continues to be low and demand continues to be high. So that's the reason behind it, that, or the very simplistic reason behind it. And, and just be mindful, again, 
don't assume home prices are just going to have the bottom drop out from underneath it because uh, we've dealt with that. And, and I'm speaking from looking at a graph right now since 1993, um, that home prices have continued to go up even when interest rates have risen. What will come down, and Jalen alluded to this, is the amount of homes sold, right? And the amount of homes going over listing price. That slows down, understandably. Why? Because interest rates take some people out of the market altogether, let alone just slows down buying power. Yeah. Right? So like you said, what some people were willing to put a bid in 100,000 over, over listing price for 1.3 million became a 1.4 million. Nowadays, interest rates are, are changing that buying power. And so things aren't selling for uh, as much over list price. So, yep. Yep. And then I have a, a quick cautionary tale. I had a guy that was not wanting to have his uh, monthly payment over 1600, including everything, mm -hmm. wanting a condo. So he was looking at about $220,000, $230,000 condo. This was before interest rates increased. He said that he wanted to wait against the realtor and my objections. Mm -hmm. He said he wanted to wait to save up enough money to have the down payment that allows him to, to stay under his threshold and buy maybe a little bit more house. That, that plan is completely out the window. Interest mm -hmm. rates have risen over a full percent since the last time he was, you know, seriously thinking about it. Yep. And so no, no matter the amount of money he can save, he's never going to catch up with, oh, I want $1,600 for my total monthly payment at this price point. Like, well, that house is appreciating and your interest rates are going to continue to go up. So either you have to buy down the interest rate, do whatever it is, but it's, it's now unattainable to get that house for that price with that amount down. You're gonna right. need to save more money down now. So this is the one of the many cautionary tales of just waiting and thinking that the market's gonna get better, the market's gonna crash, right. the market's going to, it's not gonna happen. It's I'm gonna not... share, I'm gonna share another horror story that happened recently that I was informed about. And that was a, a individual um, finally got their offer uh, accepted and while they were in escrow, interest rates rose. The rate was not locked in and the rates ticked up. And ultimately they had to withdraw their offer because by the time they were about to lock in rates, they had, they had tried to buy at the max at, at their highest point. Um, and they had changed enough that it changed their monthly payment and they had to back out. So there's nothing wrong in the house. Inspections came back fine. It was just when they were, that's the reality. If you don't know your budget um, and you don't have any wiggle room, understand that, especially this day and age with interest rates doing what they're doing, unfortunately, talk with your lender <laughs> and understand exactly what numbers you're working with. So that's not you. Um, Cause that's an unfortunate reality for, for this day and age. Again, especially for those ill-informed individuals. Um, and maybe by that person's situation, maybe it's just absolutely bad luck. Um, nonetheless, it happened, right? And and it's a, an experience that I'm sharing with everybody now, saying don't let that be you. So, yeah, that's a that's a bit rough. Yeah, yeah. Not locking the interest rate while under while under contract. That's that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's touch on the very last one, and then we'll move on to our business bookend. So inventory, and we've touched on it quite a few times now, but give us a quick summary, Nick, of what you're seeing with inventory and what the national average for inventory is looking like. Yeah, inventory nationally is in around two months of supply. And for the novice individual, they're just like, what does that mean? All it means is that if everything froze today, it would take approximately two months to sell all the homes that are currently on the market. Why does that matter? Well, in a quote unquote neutral market, it's not buyer, it's not seller. You ideally want uh, in around five months at least um, ideally even six months worth of inventory. So for those, again, those pessimists out there, just like, oh, bubble, bubble. In the mid 2000s, we were about in, in around nine months of inventory. And, and depending on where you were in the country, up to 10 months of inventory, which is which ultimately translates into black and white. That's a lot of homes um, yep. in comparison. So again, we're at currently two nationally. California, we're hovering in and around high ones and even bottom twos right now. Um, and that's the facts being the facts. So again, what does that mean? It means it drives prices up. Why? Because it's low supply and there's a lot of demand to live um, and, and have their, their own piece of the pie. So 
That's, yep. that's inventory. That's inventory. 